So let's talk a little bit about um, what are some of the elements in any kind of primary shame experience um, that are really also depicted in the initiation rituals. Um, the first is an encounter with the unknown holy other. Um, or to talk about it as something that the ego has not had adequate experience with. It's really other than what is known. So it's a, it's a kind of unknown other. Um, and so most shame experiences have some kind of uh, encounter with that. If there's trauma, uh, especially earlier in life, um, that's often the case that it's an experience with a kind of energy that the ego is unable to handle. Um, and so we may get dissociation, a variety of other kinds of responses to try to manage this uh, overwhelming energy. There's also a kind of sense of being possessed by some kind of new energy uh, and it's a creative energy, something that is also not necessarily all bad, that there's something very uh, positive and powerful in the experience as well. Um, and the consequence of that kind of experience is that there's an emotional transformation of the individual. It changes them. So uh, the the it particular experience uh, is one that alters the ego and it can't go back. Um. Can you go back to number two? Uh, I'm not clear on where does this possessive creative uh, energy come from as a result of a shame experience? Well, the archetypal energy, I think the archetype is not all bad. It's a question of how it gets experienced and metabolized that determines whether it ends up being totally negative in the experience of the individual or not. So uh, I think useful to sort of have an, an orientation that there's something that's valuable and good that has not been uh, appropriately or well metabolized by consciousness um, and that the task in, in, in different sort of ways if we use alchemical terminology it's to, to extract the gold out of the experience so that it can be appropriately transformative. Um, and what's really critical, as we'll uh, note a bit later, is the presence of a kind of reflective ability uh, with the experience. Glenn? Does it matter the age of the person who is having this experience? Well, certainly age makes a good bit of difference, I think. Uh, but what's probably more significant is where have, has their consciousness been uh, around a particular material and, as we'll note later, um, what sort of reflective presence has there been for them about their experience? So uh, another way to talk about that is that in the therapy experience, when we're working through uh, material uh, complexes and so forth, it's really critical to have the reflective presence of the therapist. And for children, what, what we now know from research with trauma is that there's a significant difference if the parents or the adult individuals in their lives have a reflective capacity or a reflective function. If they do, the trauma has less enduring effect for them. And so that the presence of a reflective capacity in the other individual, um, or the adult individuals, is really important for children, but I think also for us as adults. 